We're going to be starting off with Guglioni Sparkling Rosé, plus the northeastern part of Italy, in uh, Veneto. The name is Molinara. Molinara is a great thing. Tradi traditionally went into making Amarone. It's a wine that's very prestigious, it costs about $50 to $60, dollars. and uh, Molinara is very light skin, very, very delicate, and in 2010, they said no more Molinara, cannot use it anymore into the blend. So, Guglioni was growing all this Molinara, and they're like, what are we going to do with the Molinara? So they started making a sparkling wine out of it, and so they made a sparkling wine out of it, let, let it sit on top of the skin so it pulls off the color, pulls off the flavor, which not, not a lot of rosés do. Then they call it Vigliaco, put the very first piece that they made on the stairs of the consortium that made the laws, and it means coward. Uh, it's very it's very light, it has a lot of this red tone fruit, and it's brewed, so it's dry, less than 12 grams per liter of sugar, but it has this flavor to it that's almost sweet, where it has so much fruit, like biting into a, a ripe strawberry. So that's going to go best with the venma, uh, kind of the red, red flavors inside of there. If there's a little bit of spice, it's going to Offset that spice. Okay. And then the red wine here. This is Lincourt Pinot Noir. This comes from Santa Rita Hills, which is in Santa Barbara. So north of LA is where Santa Barbara is. It's a very cool climate because it's very close to the Pacific Ocean, and that cool climate gives it this this uh, acid to kind of balance it out. Pinot Noir is very light skin, great. It has a lot of earthy tones to it, kind of like this mushroomy type of flavor. And that's going to go with the chicken liver, the uh, chicken liver pate that Tom made. And will the edamame go with anything? Uh, the edamame is probably best with the sparkling wine as well, because that acid is going to kind of cleanse your palate every time you take a bite of it. Thank you. Okay, this is Secateur's Chenin Blanc, and Chenin Blanc's a wine that has a lot of acid to it. So, the, this, pairing up this gyoza right here, it really depends on the sauce that you, you use, and we're using three different sauces here, shoyu, vinegar, sesame seed oil, so it really depends on how you make it, but if you, you're making all of them kind of going equal parts, Really the vinegar kind of stands out to me as that tart acid. So you want the acid to kind of pair. If you get a flabby wine that doesn't have a lot of acid, then the, the vinegar is going to kind of overpower the wine. So you want acid to, to meet with, with acid. Chenin Blanc is one of the highest acid grapes out there. Uh, you'll find it in like Sauvignon, Vouvre, classically, they have a lot of acid to it. In uh, Chenin Blanc in South Africa, which they call Steen, is one of the most widely grown grapes in South Africa. This, is, this one's kind of emulating a Vouvre. There's a little bit of roundness to it, but the acid's still there to pair up with that vinegar. Secateurs is that the, the clippers that they use to cut and prune off uh, leaves and uh, drop fruit, cutting fruit by uh, reducing the yields, concentrates the flavors in the grapes. So that's what the secretary uh, indicates. Uh, from South Africa and the coastal region, which is on the western, southern side of, of South Africa, where it's more of a cooler climate, and the cooler climate doesn't give you any over, over ripeness, so you get all that preserved acid because it's a cooler climate. So try that one with the, with the gyoza, and really get that sauce with the vinegar inside of it. Show the label this one. Does it go with the jellyfish too? Oh yes, uh, it should go with the jellyfish too. The acid to kind of clean off yeah. any fishiness uh, from, from the jellyfish. Uh, really, just to really cleanse your palate. Yeah. For the pork, pork and, and uh, pinot, those are usually classic combinations because of the lightness. Pork doesn't have a lot of that heavy red meat protein where you'd need tannin, and Pinot Noir is a very light tannin grape. So the lower amount of tannin is going to match, match the, the body and richness of the pork. And then for the for the kawa, uh, it has this vinegar sauce in it. So again, that tartness. Same thing with the with the jellyfish, which has a tartness. Same thing with the vinegar with the gyoza, the Chenin Blanc. Again, with that acid to clean to clean it away. That's the best pairing with the with the with the chicken skin. The wines to go with the, the ramen. I'm giving you different wines depending on what type of broth you had. 
So if you had one of the clear broths, the shoyu based broth that are lighter, give me a white wine. It's Dona Fugata Antilia. It comes from Sicily. And it's Amsonica and Caterato. Two of the indigenous grapes to Sicily. Grapes that would go into making Marsala. Uh, but this wine is, is made bone dry, just like regular wine. So it's dry, it's light. It has a refreshing taste to it. Uh, it's not going to overpower the broth that, that you have. Uh, don't forget to be woman in flight because of the uh, times I had to flee from the mainland part of Italy down to Sicily. And so that's uh, Don't forget to Antilia. And if you have one of the thicker broths that, that has a, that cloudiness, and that richness and body to it, I give you a red wine here. This is Bernabaleva Camino Navajereros. And it's a Spanish wine. It comes from Madrid. And it's made out of uh, garnacha or grenache. Really old vines, very viscous. 80-year-old uh, vines that these... Uh, that was planted back in 1930 and then these uh, two cousins they're like you know grandpa planted these grapes and we never did anything with them for 80 years so then they start, start to make wine with the, with the grapes that their grandfather had planted uh, so this is a very uh, rich full wine just like the, how your broth is going to be rich and full but again there's not a lot of tannin to this wine because it's not like eating a steak where you need that that gripping tannin that you need with Cabernet Sauvignon to a, to a ribeye you just need big richness without the tannin and so that's what that's why you're gonna get this way right, right here with that broth so we have pig ears also what is that I have to taste that one yeah. that's supposed to go with the aioli spicy aioli spicy aioli spicy so the crispy pig ears it has a dipping sauce, which is like a spicy aioli. It's not, it's not like super, super hot, but it has a lingering heat to it. And the Buglioni uh, Rosé has a little touch of sweetness, and that's going to offset that spice. So this is what you want to do with it. Plus there's a lot of acid to it, kind of clean and refreshing. That's why there's a little slice of lemon that's on the pig ears, because that acid is going to cut through the oil that's in the pig ears because it is a deep fried dish. Okay, this is Schio Petal Blanc de Roses. Comes from Friuli, Venezia Giulia, northeastern part of Italy, Italy. Specifically on this hill called the Colio, faces facing southeast, getting the best sun exposure. And so it's a cooler climate. So they get the acid that's refreshing to cut through the the fat in the in the fried chicken. <clears throat> and it's a mix of a bunch of different grapes here: Tokai Frilano, Pinot Grigio, uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Ribola, and then the last one is Malvasia. The Malvasia is very aromatic grape, and it's aged in oak for the last for the last uh, for, uh, for the Malvasia. So it gives it more body, more richness to stand up to the fried chicken, and also the tar sauce, which gives it that body and richness and creaminess to it. So that little bit of Malvasia is going to help pair with the body and the and, and, your, and uh, that way the mouth feels about the same. No no sulfur added to this. It's all it's all natural. You're gonna feel kind of like this um, different texture to it and that's because it sits on the leaves on the dead yeast cells for about eight months that's going to give you that this extra dimension of complexity and flavor to the wine uh, it's, it's an awesome wine with a lot of fruit but yet a lot of acid to go, to go with this the food is, what they eat is organic, plus they're running around like a wild. So it takes longer to bleed, but because of they are very raised in natural, so very healthy too, what we eat. So why I chose the chidori, when you cook with chidori, right? I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with, you buy chicken from supermarket, you boil, try to make soup, you get lots of aku, right? But with chidori, you don't get aku. Because what they eat is so healthy, and you hardly see aku. But we cook, boil first, then take out, we, we call, we wash. Then we put it with ice water, then we wash again. 
Then we cook with 95 degree temperature for eight hours. It's not boiling. It's like you literally see boiling like a champagne bubble. Then you cook for eight hours. But important is to keep the lowest temperature for a long time. So the real clear dashi. If you cook with over 100, then you're gonna mess up the soup. So because the soup's not gonna be clean as well. So everything what we do is take so long. Then during the process, we add sort of uh, seed food product like macarons, niboshi, dashi, and this garlic and onion. Then tone down the balance of the soup. So that's how we make uh, jidori. So tonkotsu is a thing that we use pork head, pork femur, uh, and pork head, pork femur, and pork. So three different kinds of type of pork we use. Then we cook almost 18 to 20 hours. So our kitchen is 24 hour operation because somebody has to wash. Look The temperature and of course, you know, it's dangerous because it's almost over 350 boiling temperature. Because the boiling heat has to go through the bone to take out all the broth. That's why our tonkotsu broth is very creamy and silky and very pure. We don't add anything, we just cook a long time to get our tonkotsu real broth.